satisfy your need for happiness through your own curiosity with the Ranveer Show. The the example that you use right now about how there can be differences between the RBI think tank and the government think tank, uh, I think you highlighted uh, like election season. So that when election season is coming up, a lot happens in the country because the government in power would be trying to stay in power, and the opposition would be trying to gain power as well. Uh, the one thing I've learned about a politician's life is that it's starkly divided into two parts. In the first one, the mission is to get elected. In the second one, the mission is governance. Mm-hmm. uh now the thing is in that whole process about trying to get elected it does change behavioral patterns it does change decision making etc etc and i kind of don't blame them because that's how the system is built uh you're saying that during the election season it kind of bothered your work as well my question to you is say if a government gets elected mm. uh and you know they know they're going to be in power for the next uh tenure do they still have a large say or do they oppose you a lot in your functioning as the RBI governor no see uh, let me give an example because i think again examples make it more concrete sure um in the run up to an election there's a great incentive to waive loans especially to the agriculture sector which is politically very important so farmer loan waivers are very very uh, sort of become pressing for every candidate to announce hum maaf kar denge ye sab ye karj maaf kar denge and the problem of course is that once you become the new government you have to find money to pay for all that because when you say it's waiver it means the government is going to pay the debt to the banks because somebody has to pay otherwise the banks will make losses and that won't be uh, you know permissible in the long run so when the government comes into power then it says paise kahan se aayenge how will we get the money to pay for all this we have just announced such a big thing and we've also got so much else to do on the development front we need to build roads we need to build airports we need to uh, you know provide uh, transfers to the most needy so there's a lot of demands and so invariably what used to happen is they do the loan waiver and then after they do the loan waiver and they f- win the election they come and say acha please help us <laughs> and you say you know how can i help you mm. uh, you know forbearance don't don't uh, you know let us do this let us do that but the problem of course is once they get into power they have to govern exactly what you said promises earlier which some of which are not the greatest promise but then governance has to happen after they get elected and then if there's no money how do you govern uh, you need some money to make investments and so on I think it's important to be a little careful in the promises you make because uh, you do need to have the ability to govern afterwards. Have you had to sort situations like this out? Absolutely. And have you had to give in to government's demands? No, I mean many of these were state governments and uh, uh but you know state governments have some backing also from the central government sometimes and you have to say look, you know this is not good practice. I can do this but I can't do that. uh what we have to do is find something which works in the broader uh, scheme of things but also i mean ultimately even though we uh, you know politicians have to do what they have to do as a regulatory institution if you give in too easily you make it easier for them to do it and in fact they will feel upset that you made it easy because next time they have to do it again mm. they would rather that you stop them in fact they would you know i think the the right thing was would be they would make all the promises up front and then you'd come in and say no 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 you can't uh, i mean many politicians would love the courts to stop them from doing that because then they'll have the money to do the governance afterwards mm. if they're stopped by the courts they can blame the courts and Or, per- perhaps they can publicly blame you also they can blame me uh, <laughs> actually this was uh, i mean this is the role of independent institutions to take some of the blame and and but you know you need to allow them to be independent then then they can absorb the blame was it a fun stint i think it was a very fulfilling stint because there were many days you left at the end of the day um, you know 7 8 o'clock meetings all day but you felt you accomplished something we moved the needle that is something you rarely get in any job partly because most jobs what you're doing is you're pushing the paper to somebody else even if you you know agree 
there's somebody else who has to take the decision. At the Reserve Bank, a lot of the decisions you could take yourself. You didn't have to move it elsewhere. So if we debated the whole day within the bank and we said, hum ye karenge, you could do it. You didn't have to ask for further permission. And that allowed you to feel at the end of the day that you actually had made a difference. And in public service, there's no better feeling. If you enjoyed today's clip, make sure you check out these curated playlists that we've made especially for you related to the subject that was spoken about in this clip.